welcome to episode 21 of the Dunkelgrün podcast. My name is Anna and I am coming to you from Zurich in Switzerland. I am a knitter and a fiberholic and in my podcast I also like to talk a little bit about chemistry because I am also a chemist. So today I have a couple of finished projects for you, some works in progress as usual and I am going to talk a little bit about a trip that I did together with my boyfriend to Barcelona where we met some wonderful knitters and visited some beautiful yarn stores. And also we are going to have a special segment in which I talk about washing wool. In this episode I also have a couple of giveaway things to talk about and you are going to find them towards the end of the episode or check out the timestamp below the video to jump right to that section. If you're interested in some more details about what I am talking about, like needle sizes, etc., you can check out the show notes which you find at dunkelgrün.com or you can also follow the link below the video to find the show notes. Also, you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram in case you would like to get in touch. So let's get started with finished projects. The first finished project that I would like to show you was actually already done in the last episode, but for some reason I just completely forgot to show you. And it is my tough hat, which is a pattern by wonderful hat designer Wooly Warm Hat, who has a lot of wonderful, gorgeous hats in her repertoire. And I made this for the daughter of a really good and old friend of mine, you might recall if you have watched previous episodes, because he made this beautiful yarn bowl and nosti pin and some spindles for me, because he's a wood turner. And as um, in return, I'm making him a hat and I will also make a little shawl for his little daughter. So this hat is written in one size and it's actually written as an adult hat. And what I did in order to make it a bit smaller and to fit it uh, to a child is I reduced the needle size. So I knit this on a three and a half millimeter needle size and I used DK weight yarn for it. And you can see that it is knit with a lot of short rows. If I come a bit closer you can see the colors a bit nicer. And the color changes are actually quite special. It's a bit, little bit like in Tarja, but it's also not. I don't know, I have never done anything like it. And what I did was I cut all the ends and uh, wove them in separately. You could also carry the colors from one to the next, like the contrast color, the turquoise. But I decided to not do that because I wanted to have it nice and elastic and I thought if I would do the carrying, then I always have these little strings here and it will not be as elastic. So I actually wove in, I forgot the number, but it was way, it was more than 50 ends on this little hat. I forgot the number. And this is how I did it. People don't show so often how they weave in their ends. And I kind of am quite proud of it because now you can also wear the hat inside out without it looking too bad because the ends are woven in pretty neatly. So I just wove it up and down in those garter ridges like that. And I did that for each and every color, two ends per um, color stripe. It was a bit of work, but I was also kind of proud of it. And while I was doing it, I was just like, I want to do it. I want this to be perfectly finished. And that is usually my motivation for weaving in ends. I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. I just like have this feeling I'm, I'm, I want to make it very perfect. And in the end, I'm very happy when I did it very nicely and evenly. And uh, the yarn that I use for this is my own hand dyed yarn that I dyed specifically for this project and it is a purple and a turquoise as I showed you already and this is the organic merino decay and this is um, not organic and blue sign certified so this is the eco superwash process that I talk about back in episode something 15 I will put it here which episode I talk about this eco superwash yarn so yeah, I like the project. I love Wooly Warmhead's pattern writing. It is written really geniusly with a very cool chart for the short rows and I can only 
recommend her patterns. It's super nice. I bought the whole collection. This is a collection, the Elemental Hats, and there are three and four more other hats that have similar short row designs, and I will probably make more of them because they're really cool and make great gifts. My next finished project, you will not believe it, you guys. You will not believe what comes now. If you have been following the podcast, you will know that I have been knitting on this pair of socks since last year in September. So a very long time. And these are socks for my sister's boyfriend. And they are also knit in my hand dyed yarn, which I dyed with the Chacquard Acid Dye Chartreuse, which is a neon fluorescent green. And then I speckled it with black and the dark green color uh, from Ashford. So this is how it turned out. I'm actually quite happy with it. You can see that it's a gigantic sock. It is um, size 46 in Europe, I think, or 47 even. Something like that. It's really long. It's much bigger than I would normally make for myself. I did a 2x2 two two rib for the cuff and actually it's a knitted toe up and um, I did also a heel flap and gusset, which is funny that you can do that also when you're knitting toe up. But I have to say, after this pair of socks, I had to find out that I really prefer knitting my socks top down because then when I knit the gusset, I can decrease. And I love decreasing. I don't like increasing because the rows always get longer and it feels like it takes forever. It will go to infinity. However, when you are decreasing, it always feels faster and faster. And that's why I think I really prefer knitting it top down and not toe up. I might have to try once to knit a shawl bottom up because there you would also be decreasing and decreasing. And I think I would quite like that. So those socks are done. And actually we did also something really funny. I'm going to insert some pictures here. Um, we turned on our UV lamp. I have uh, a UV lamp and looked at how this pair of socks and this yarn look under UV light and they actually glow really nicely. So UV light, as you might, you might also know it as black light, is this kind of light that you have in discos or in club. Um, that is shorter wavelength than the visible light that you can see and it induces fluorescence in certain materials. And I also talked about that in a previous episode and I'm going to write here which episode that was in case you're interested. So this is the pair of socks and it's done and I'm very relieved. So let's move on to works in progress. In March, when I was at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I actually bought a sock blank, which I didn't talk about on the podcast. And I'm going to put a picture here of the sock blank. It is a sushi roll by easyknits.co.uk and I think the colorway is called Reverse Bow. And this is a sock yarn sock blank and it is dyed in this beautiful gradient. And here it is. Ooh. Uh, you can see I have already knitted up almost all of the yellow and then there is going to be this wonderful transition into purple. I have knitted one sock already from this sock blank. Can you believe it? I finished the other pair of socks and just knit already a new pair of socks from this sock blank. So I start, this one I did top down and I made it a lot smaller than the other one because this one is going to be for my sister who has um, skinny legs and her feet are just a little bit longer than mine. And I did also a slip stitch heel and a normal rounded kind of toe with a kitchener stitch in the end. So you can see how nicely it transitions from yellow to green. I think it's really cool. And it was my first time knitting with a sock blank. I really like how the colors are coming up. And I was surprised that it didn't stress me at all to knit with the crinkly yarn. You can see it's a little bit irregular, but it's not really terrible. It's not that bad at all. It's quite okay. I was expecting it to be very crinkly and I had the fear that I would hate it. <laughs> but I have to say I actually really love it. I have also cast on the second sock. There is not a lot to show you here, but you can see with this string here how crinkly that yarn is. But when you are tensioning it to knit it, it actually 
um, gets really straight so it's not really a problem. While I knit with it I don't even feel really how crinkly it is. Only afterwards when the rows are done then the yarn kind of goes back into its crinkly state and then it shows up a little bit as an ir irregularity. And yes, of course, these are not going to, to be identical socks. The second sock is going to be now here from green to blue, I suppose. And I'm going to make a, a third sock. I weighed the first sock and the sock blank and I'm not going to be able to make four socks out of it. So I will just make three socks and gift my sister three socks. Because I know she likes crazy colors. She loves yellow, she loves blue. And she's going, she always wears two different colored socks, by the way. So I think she's going to really like that. And also the oddity of having just three socks instead of four or two. I think that is something that fits well with my sister. I think she's going to like that. And I don't think she's watching that podcast. I hope not. I don't think so. Um, yeah, so this is where I am. And I have to say that this... Um, sock blank makes for a really good travel knitting. I went with this to Barcelona and I knit on it in the airplane and I heard about that already before that it's really nice for travel knitting but I have to completely back that because it's you don't have any yarn mess it's just unraveling when you pull it always comes it's never like a skein of yarn a cake of yarn or a ball of yarn when you're pulling sometimes it gets snagged and then you have to check in your bag where is it why is it um, not coming and this will always just unravel and you will always can keep knitting and knitting and i really like that i really really like that it makes up for the fact that the yarn is crinkled a thousand times and also this was by the way the idea of pau from pau knits um, who I met in Barcelona in the gin and tonic bar Elefanta where he's working and um, he had the idea that you can wear it as a scarf like this and then you can knit and then you can actually do that it's really fun it's just maybe people will look at you in a weird way but it works it's really cool so yeah enough about that this is my new pair of socks on the go and I'm actually quite happy to be back to sock knitting and to have some reasonable speed again at uh, sock knitting. Actually this is even more than reasonable because I finished it in less than a week. So yes, I'm happy about that. My other work in progress is a more large and more long-term project and I have shown you already on the last episode of the podcast. It is a sweater which I am designing. And this is it. It is a colorwork sweater and this is the body of it up to the armpits. It is this wonderful snow star pattern which I am transitioning from blue into the neutral color. And the yarn that I am using for this is Lana Rara, which is rare Swiss wool and this is um, 66% rare Swiss sheep breeds and 33% or one third um, of uh, mulesing free merino wool to make it a bit more soft. And yeah, I wanted to design something out of this yarn since ages and now I'm finally doing it. And I had this color work idea in my mind and I just wanted to transform it into a sweater. And now I had already knitted this far before and then I realized that my sweater was much too large because, yes, Gajun's watching you guys. I know the theory, I know the theory, but I'm sometimes a bit more naughty than I look because I thought, um, I swatched in the color work, or actually let me be completely honest with you, I swatched in this color work. This color work is what I swatched and this is where I took gauge from and then this color work is what I knitted. I was lucky because the gauge turned out to be the same and then I also swatched in flat stocking knit stitch um, with size, I think, 4mm needles. But this gauge turned out a bit too large than what I wanted for the sweater. So I thought I want to have it a bit tighter, so I just go down the needle size. Not the right thing to do. Swatch again and get the gauge. Because, um, oh yeah, and actually here I was knitting in the round anyway and this was knitted flat. So it's all a huge mess. So I should have just swatched in the round. But I didn't do that. Instead I knit um, with the same needle size that I used for the color work all the way up uh, in the flat stocking net and it turned out way too loose. And then I frogged it all the way back and now I knit it again and even though it looks like 
it is loose up here it is just because there are there are no knitting needles in here i have it right now on a piece of yarn on a piece of cotton yarn because i actually blocked this thing already because i wanted to be exactly sure about which measurements i have before i calculate the stitch counts of the um the shoulder and the neckline and the arm area. So I'm going to make a drop sleeve. I mean, this is usually not so crucial with fitting. It is going to be probably a bit of a um, boxy sweater, and this fits very well with the box sleeve with the drop sleeves. And I still want to make sure that I know my gauge. So what I did now is I swatched also in um, in the flat and with the needle size to get the gauge that I want for up here. In the end now when I was already all this way up I should have done that from the beginning and this I did in this different color in this green and with this swatch I did something different because I know for a fact that when I knit uh, flat back and forth and knit one row and I purl another row that my gauge is going to be more loose when I purl and then when I knit and I wanted to compensate for that and what I thought of was using um, a smaller needle size for the pearl rows and so I did that I used a three and a half millimeter needle for the pearl rows and a four millimeter needle for the knit rows I suppose did I yes I did that and it turned out really well so there is no difference between the knits and the pearls and I got the gauge that I wanted to it's actually I think now the same gauge as I had in the color work with a four and a half millimeter needle and now I can I think I can use the calculations that I already did or I might have to adjust them just so slightly. So this is coming up. I'm going to start with the front and the back and I'm very happy and I'm very looking forward to how it's going to be. And yeah, don't just say that you swatch, don't just pretend that you swatch, swatch, wash the swatch and use also the needle sizes that you did in the swatch in the end for the project. Don't swatch with four and a half millimeter needles, get a loose gauge and then just say, oh, I want a tighter gauge, I just go down a needle size. It can work, it works often, but it doesn't always work. And if you want to be really sure, you have to be very exact. I know I'm a scientist, I should be more exact than that, but I like sometimes to be a bit more free and just wing it, so yeah. And then you lose some time, that's how it goes. So this was all my knitting projects for this episode. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about what I have been doing in the last couple of weeks when I was not filming an episode. So first of all, during pretty much the whole month of April, I was very busy working on a scientific publication. I have started working on this already in December 2016 when I finished my PhD and I kept working on it on and off during the last year and then it was always like going back and forth between my collaborators, my former boss and some collaborators in different countries and it took a very long time. Then we handed it in at a scientific journal, it was rejected and then it was transferred to another journal and then revisions were requested and they wanted to, us to do more experiments, which was a bit difficult because I am not working in the lab anymore now. And yeah, we got it all done. It was just a lot of work because I was the corresponding author, so that meant I did the correspondence with the publisher and this I did next to working my normal job and next to going to classes to become a scientific librarian. So it was a lot of work and I'm actually surprised by the amount of knitting that I got done in this time, but I did not get to podcast and also I did not get to Instagram a lot. So during this time I was also not able to take care of our Ravelry group properly and that hurt me quite a bit because I love the Ravelry group and I love everybody who is participating there. So I made a post in the Ravelry group to ask um, for two volunteers who would agree to be moderators of the group. 
And I have found two lovely ladies and they are Fanny, who is uh, Fanny Marie, and Gabi, who is seven knit and more. And they both speak German and English and they are super lovely and wonderful creative knitters. And I'm very glad that they have joined the crew of moderators on the in the Dunkelgrün Ravelry group. So at this point, a huge thank you to both of you, Fanny and Gabi. I am very happy that you're helping me out. So thank you so much. And yeah, in the meantime, my paper got published in case you're interested, in case you're a scholar and you have access to, um, to literature from the American Chemical Society, which, where we, which is the publisher where we published our paper. Uh, check it out, I put a link in the, in the description below and you can find the paper that we have published. So after it was uh, published, I took uh, two weeks of vacation and I was very glad that these two events collided this way because otherwise I would have had to work on the paper during my vacation, which would have been really not nice. But I was lucky, the paper was published and I could go on two weeks of a vacation. And uh, for a part of that vacation, my boyfriend and I traveled to Barcelona. We had some really nice times there. We visited some beautiful landmarks, the beautiful architecture by Antoni Gaudi. And also we got to meet some wonderful knitters. And this was Pau from Pau Knits and um, Raquel, who is raquelfrancia.s on Instagram. And she also has an Etsy shop called Raquel Francia. We met with them in the Gin and Tonic Bar Elefanta, which is where Pau works. And in case you ever get to Barcelona, you really need to go there. You really need to say hi to Pau because it is such a beautiful place. And the cocktails that Pau makes are just beautiful and delicious and works of art. And he knows so much about all the ingredients he puts into his drinks, all the plants that go into it, the background stories. It's an experience, I'm telling you. You really have to go there. And of course, when we were in Barcelona, we also visited two yarn stores there. And I have made a little clip for you of the two yarn stores that we visited. The first one was Philanthropia and the second one was All You Need Is Love. And I'm going to insert those two clips here so that you can have a look.
So as you have probably seen, these two yarn shops are a little bit different. The first one, Philanthropia, is um, more targeted at locals. It also has this gigantic knitting table in the middle where you can sit down and hang out and knit. And it is a really inviting atmosphere in there. Melissa, who owns it, is a really charming person and I felt very welcome and I think I will be back to uh, Philanthropia in the future. The second yarn shop is in the um, touristic center of Barcelona, in the old town and um, it is more targeted towards tourists, I would say, and they are more like in the... they are selling souvenir yarn, kind of. Also at Philanthropia you are going to get beautiful souvenir yarn from Catalonia, but um, the second yarn shop, All You Need Is Love, is targeted more a bit at that. And they, there is also not the big table where you can sit down and it, it's more in the old town where people walk by and go in and grab a little souvenir. And it's also a really beautiful store and I love to, um, to get to know it. So let me show you what I have purchased. At Philanthropia there was some beautiful yarn in the shelf that caught my eye all the time while I was sitting there at a the table and talking to Melissa and Pau. And uh, this was this naturally colored yarn that I have here for you. I really just had to get it. And this is by Lanas Alpaca and it is a 100% uh, Peruvian wool. Peruvian highland, highland wool and it is worsted weight for 5 to 6 millimeter nails. And interestingly also there is the word Velna here, which is maybe the name of this base. But I also know that Velna means wool in some Slavic languages, maybe in Polish, I'm not sure. Magdalena, help me. I'm not sure, but it means wool in some Eastern European <laughs> languages, I think. And um, yeah, it is a very soft, very nicely structured two-ply yarn and non-superwash, and I really like it. And I got two skeins of this color, and then I also got one skein or one ball of this color, and they are 50 gram balls, and I'm probably going to use them for a hat or for a baby knit. Because I have a very good friend, very good friend, one of my best friends, who is pregnant and who is expecting a baby, and I still have to think about something that I want to make for the baby. So maybe something from this wool. On the other hand, I don't know if she's going to be able to handle non-superwash stuff for her baby. So maybe not, maybe better something, not, uh, something superwash. Who knows, I'm gonna see. Maybe it's gonna be a colorwork hat for me. And the other thing that I got, the other skein of yarn um, that I bought at uh, All You Need Is Love is this wonderful Murmur yarn, which is an exclusive yarn that is sold by the yarn shop All You Need Is Love. And this is the Dirty Martini colorway. And I almost didn't want to get that, but my boyfriend, my naughty boyfriend, <laughs> said I should get it and I should have a souvenir yarn from... Barcelona and I'm really happy with it and also it reminded me of the gin and tonics that we were drinking. Of course it's a dirty martini, um, it's not a gin and tonic but still it it reminded me of the drinks that we were having in Barcelona which were really delicious and I think the colors are very cool and are very much like me and actually when I got home I was also like what do I do with this? Maybe a baby knit because I started to think about baby knits now because of my friend and um, then I was looking at my stash and I started to put it next to this and then I was blown away. This is the yarn by Miss Farfelu, who is Dominique Laroque and she, I talked about this yarn in the last episode. It is the colorway Rabbit Hole. She's an indie dyer from Canada and this is an eco um, superwash yarn. And uh, yeah, I thought that they would go together really well and I have two skeins of that rabbit hole one because Dominique is so kind and I was thinking this would make a good Zweig sweater. I was not really um, inspired by the Zweig sweater so far but when I held these colors together I don't know something inside me has changed. It would be a dunkelgrün Zweig sweater. I just don't know if I would have enough with two skeins of yarn here with two skeins of fingering for the main color and this is just um, 
412 yards and 375 meters. It is not 400 meters like other fingering weight yarns are. I have seen that there was also a very new, very exciting design by Caitlin Hunter, which was just published, I think, yesterday or the day before yesterday. And for this, this would be enough yardage and I might do that one. But I like that in the Zweig, there is a large area of one color shown off. That is a really cool property of that sweater that not many sweaters have. Because usually in color work, some colors get hidden and I would like to show off this dirty martini color here. What am I gonna do? Is it gonna be enough? What do you say? What do you say? All of you out there who have knitted spikes, am I gonna be fine with this? I am a 32 inch bust and I could make short sleeves. That might be the solution. We will see. I'm gonna think about it. So the other really wonderful thing and the last thing that I'm going to talk about now about the, my acquisitions uh, that I got in Barcelona was this project bag. I looked at those project bags in the yarn shop All You Knit Is Love and I was like, wow, they're so beautiful. There were some really, really nice prints and I was like, wow, I if I would not have enough project bags already. And then, and let me show you the inside. It's nice and purple. I really like it. It's a very nice contrast to this dark blue and natural color outside here. And then I realized who made these project bags. It was the lady that I was having gin tonics with two days earlier, Raquel. And then I was sold. Then I needed to buy those project bags. So I have actually also one project bag like this and not exactly like this, a different print and a yarn by Murmur Yarns that is hand-dyed in Barcelona in a bag that is handmade in Barcelona which I bought for you guys as a giveaway and you are going to find that towards the end of the episode as a little thank you for being around and for sticking with me even when I am not here. So that was all the acquisitions from Barcelona. If you would like to see some impressions of our trip and some photos that I took in Barcelona then wait for the very end of the episode. I am going to make a little slideshow there just with some of the nicest pictures and impressions of the city. And right now we are going to jump over to uh, the special segment of this podcast which is going to be about wool wash. <laughs> I'm also going to answer two questions which I have received over the last couple of months. One is about uh, fabric conditioners or hair conditioners and wool and the other one is on the subject of crocking and acidic pH of hands. So recently I have heard from a lot of people that they are using uh, solid bars of wool wash and as you know I have also started to make my own soap bars like this one here which is a soap bar containing lanolin and um, when I gave them out to some of my friends at Edinburgh Yarn Festival uh, people said to me oh I can't wait to wash my wool or my socks or something with this and I did a little bit of research I have actually not washed my knits yet with one of my soaps for one reason. In my opinion and to my knowledge, solid bars of soap or of this kind of handmade soap that is a sodium-based um, soap made with sodium hydroxide, um, I think that this is not the best thing to wash your wool because um, water typically contains calcium carbonate which is also known as limestone in English or kalk in German and this, um, calcium, these calcium salts are present in almost any water that you get. In some areas you have a bit more and in some areas you have a bit less. Like if you live close to the mountains and you get spring water from the mountains, you have very likely a more hard water than people who live close to the sea. And they have um, soft water, which means they have less calcium in the water. And... Um, 
Anyways, even the soft water contains some calcium. If you would want to have calcium free water, you would need to boil it or you could use rainwater also, then this is almost calcium free. But if the salt water contains calcium and you um, put some natural soap, handmade soap into it that was made with sodium hydroxide, then um, it is going to precipitate as calcium salts and those are insoluble. And you might know that in the bathroom when you uh, don't clean your, your bathtub for a while or your shower, there is this kind of soap slur that is formed, this insoluble stuff that is a bit difficult to clean or you need to use a good detergent to get rid of it. And the way you could dissolve that is with uh, acid, so with some vinegar or citric acid or an acidic cleaner, you can get rid of that. And what happens if you wash wool or also your hair, there is actually quite a bit of information online about using um, solid bars for shampoo, um, that this precipitate of the calcium salt is going to cover your fiber, your hair or your wool or your knitting and it's gonna make it look dull. One time probably won't make any difference but if you do it more and more it will make it dull and it will cover it and it will not um, you will kind of lose the nice properties of your material or of your hair. And a thing that you can do to avoid that is after you have washed it with your solid bar of soap, you give it an acidic rinse like with citric acid or with vinegar. So I had the idea, but <laughs> that was not very well thought through, to put some uh, citric acid crystals into a solid bar of soap because then I thought this might get rid of the problem. But I was not thinking very far because if you add acid, to a soap directly, you revert the process of soap making. So you kind of destroy the soap and you create um, the oils. And this is also not something I would want. I would not want to have the free oils that are in this soap present on my wool. So for me, it typically means that I wash my wool with liquid soap and not with a solid soap and I'm going to show you the products that I like using. So the wool wash that I like to use, and I am not endorsed here, I am not paid to say this, it is just um, a wool wash which I have purchased and I like to use, and that is by Unicorn, and it's called Unicorn Fiber Wash. So this is what I basically use to wash all my knitwear, and I am really happy with it. It has a very gentle lavender scent, it's really not strong at all, and um, it washes the wool really well and it comes in a very nice large um, bottle with this thing here at the top. And of this brand there are also two other products. This one is the Fiber Rinse and this is a fiber conditioner which is specially for wool and silk and um, protein fibers. And this is um, especially good for keeping the natural electrostatic properties of the fi protein fibers. So I also really like this, but I don't use it as much as I use the fiber wash because not all of the yarns need this. It is also a very good softener if um, you have a scratchy fiber that you would like to wear at your neck or something. This is very nice to soften it and it is specifically formulated for wool. So I think it's really nice. And the third product, which is sold by this unicorn company, is the Power Score. And this one is designed for washing raw fleeces. You can see it has this cute little sheep here. Um, so with this one you can scour and wash raw fleeces. But I also like it when I have heavy stains in uh, wool. Uh, I don't have that so often. I have actually never used it on any of my knitwear. I suppose it's quite nice when you have a baby who might uh, spit or make your, your clothes dirty with things. Um, I have used it on a piece of lamb fur which uh, belongs to my friend who is expecting a baby and she bought a used uh, piece of lamb fur to cover her uh, baby car. And this was a bit dirty from the shoes of that baby, it was a bit larger baby already. And um, so I washed that with this power scour or power score, I don't know, power scour probably. And I was really satisfied with how the stains went out really well and it did not make the wool dry or anything. I think it's a really nice product. So 
super cool. I recommend it if you have heavy stains in your wool or in your knits. There is also this product uh, by Tuft Woolens that was recently gifted to me by my dear friend Christy and I love the smell of this. And this is sold as a sock soap and I have heard also of many people who are using this and who are quite happy with it but also this product goes under the category of a solid soap and I would rather use that on my body to wash my skin but not so much for washing my knitting. So I have received a question in the Ravelry group about using uh, fabric conditioners or also hair conditioner for the conditioning of knitting fibers. Many of you might have heard or read already that it is not recommended to use fabric conditioner on wool products because it's not good. Usually there is not much of an explanation. So I would like to give some thoughts um, to that uh, kind of product and why it might be not so good to use uh, fabric conditioners or even hair conditioners on your knitting. Conditioners and fabric softeners typically contain cationic surfactants and those are often quaternary ammonium salts. And this sounds now very complicated. What do those compounds do? They basically form a layer around your fiber. And this can be a good or a bad thing. There is a giant variety of different kinds of cationic surfactants on the market and it would be impossible for me to go into detailed information about even just a couple of them. But usually the products that you buy, if it's fabric conditioner for cotton or if it's hair conditioner for your hair, is tailored for the kind of fiber that it is marketed at. So a hair conditioner won't be that good at conditioning your cotton and a fabric softener might be not something you want to use on your scalp and on your hair. And so how is it now with wool? So as we all know, wool has some very nice natural properties. Like for example, it is very nicely water repellent. I have created this little clip here to show you what happens when you put some drops of water on some natural non-superwash wool. And you can see how the wool really repels the water. And it's almost like one of those high-tech nano materials that um, repel water drops and you can move the water around on it. And even superwash wool, which is the second swatch that I made, uh, does a little bit of this water repelling. It is quite strong for the fact that it is superwash wool, but it uh, is a little bit less than with non-superwash wool. At some point the superwash wool is going to start soaking up the water. So these are properties of wool that we like and there are many more as you probably know and if you add something on the surface of the wool you can only imagine that it is going to change the properties of the wool. So a quaternary ammonium salt or a cationic surfactant is going to attach to the surface of the wool and change its structure and how it belong, uh, behaves towards other um, materials like water or soap or your sweat of your body or your skin also. So it can be a good thing, it can make the wool softer and wearable and it can also be a bad thing because it can cause the sweat not to be transported so much anymore. Actually I did a little bit of reading about uh, fabric softeners and I found out that it is really not so good to use those even on your cotton towels or something like that because they create this layer that uh, is insoluble after some washes with fabric softener the uh, layer is going to stay there and it will take really a long um, time and several washes to get rid of it again and what it does is even it changes the way that towels, for example, can take up humidity. So if there is a thick layer of fabric softener, you also need more detergent to wash your towels or your clothes in the end. And also they are not so good for the environment if they go down in the wastewater. So actually, since I have started reading about fabric softeners, I was using them before on my laundry days, but I have stopped doing that. And I actually really like my clothes a lot more now that they don't have softener. It it takes a little bit of getting used to it because um, my clothes usually come out quite stiff when I don't use softener but I actually prefer it after some time because the, the properties of the fabric are more natural. 
So how is it with hair conditioner? I suppose that with hair conditioner there is also a huge variety of different uh, products available on the market. That are, there are some that contain silicones, some that are silicone free, some that are very natural. There are really a lot of different products and I guess it really really depends which product you're using and what effect you are looking for. So in the end I can only recommend you to test it, make a little swatch, wash it with your hair conditioner and see if you like it or not. Um, but maybe uh, be careful with it and be aware that it can change the properties of your knitting and maybe you prefer the natural way of your yarn. There are of course also products like this Fiber Rinse by Unicorn which are fab formulated exactly for wool. If I would want to use a conditioner on my knitting I would prefer something like that because this is actually engineered and uh, formulated for knitting and for wool and silk and, and all kinds of protein fibers. So one question that I have received that fits a bit into this topic of washing uh, yarns is about crocking and this question was sent to me by Celeste from the Yarn to Table podcast and she wanted to know because she heard something about acidic skin pH and that it can um, cause yarn dye that is in the, dye, in the yarn already to stain off to the fingers and also that it can break the nickel plating of knitting needles. So crocking is generally a process where um, dye molecules which are not fixed to the wool come out of the wool. And this can is typically known to happen with indigo because indigo dyeing does not really chemically attach the indigo dye to the wool. It just um, is an insoluble compound that is kind of caught in the wool but it's not chemically attached to it. So if you knit with it, it is going to stain off on your fingers. If you rub it against other surfaces, it is going to come off. You're going to turn other things blue and this is what we call crocking. And this can also happen with other dyes like acid dyes and you can also see it when you wash dyed wool um, in, the, in the water and the water turns colored. So typically um, this happens with acid dyes only if you have very very saturated colors. So there are many indie dyers who have this problem that they sell their dyed yarns and then people knit with them and it stains their fingers and they wash the yarn and dye comes off and they knit different colors together like a dark color and a light color and then the yarn the dye bleeds from the dark yarn to the lighter yarn and this can be really annoying. And um, it is not the indie dyer's fault. I have heard a couple of theories for this, especially like um, when people knit with yarn that it should uh, be the acidic pH of our skin that causes the dye to come off. And this is for me a little bit difficult to rationalize or to understand, I don't think that this is actually the case. Our skin is in fact slightly acidic, it has um, a, a pH lower than 7, but it is not as that acidic that it could break compounds like acid dyes. What is much more likely to happen is that you have an uh, fixed dye in the in the yarn because you dyed a very dark colorway or a very intense saturated color and even when you wash it it is going the water is going to run clear and it looks all fine you're going to dry it and then when you rewind it you bring different parts of the yarn of the fibers to the surface and the same thing happens again when you knit it so after some time, after some rearrangement of the fiber, after some handling of the stuff, you bring parts to the surface that have not been exposed to the water before and the eye is going to come off. And in my opinion, there is nothing that indie dyers can do about that. It's just something that we have to be aware of. If you are buying indie dyed yarn that is um, super dark and you want to pair it with some light yarn, you have to wash it before you combine those two colors. You have to maybe wash it several times yourself before you do that. And otherwise um, the wearing off on your, on your skin should usually not be a big problem. It is just a very small amount of dye that is coming off there and if you are allergic you maybe should be careful and maybe avoid those kinds of yarns that are very dark. 
but I think in general it should not be a big health problem. And now we have touched already a little bit on the subject of acidic sweat and I said already that our skin pH in fact is slightly acidic and there are also people who naturally have a bit more acidic sweat than others. And this can actually really cause the metal, the nickel plating on metal needles to wear off over time or depending on the acidity of your sweat even it can happen a lot faster. It is a phenomenon that is quite well known I think among guitar players because like professional guitar players or bass players or people with other, who play other instruments with metal strings um, it can happen that this nickel plating on the strings can wear off from being touched by the sweat on the fingers and this is also something you cannot do much about it you can clean your knitting needles right after you knit it with them or use a little slightly basic pH detergent to um, clean your knitting needles afterwards so that the acid cannot sit there and eat itself into the metal um, otherwise unfortunately maybe try to eat less acidic food I don't really know maybe ask your doctor if there's something you can do about that uh, acidic sweat that you have um, yeah I don't really know what else to say about that subject but it is um, in my chemical opinion a reasonable thing that can happen because the nickel plating is acid sensitive on uh, knitting needles or also on guitar strings so I hope this was helpful to you if you have any questions regarding the subject you can always and, uh, ask them here in the comments on YouTube or also check out our Ravelry group at Ravelry.com it's the Dunkelgrün group and there we chat a lot about different subjects and you can feel free to ask your questions there. So before we reach the very end of this episode we are going to talk a little bit about giveaway stuff and for this we are going to travel back in time to Anna from the past who has recorded a video already about all the giveaway stuff that is going on at the moment. We have quite a lot of giveaways, we have a winner to be announced and we have a winner to announce from last episode's giveaway and we have some patterns to give away, a project bag and a yarn. So uh, check it out if you're interested and if not then skip ahead to the very end to see the slideshow of Barcelona. So hello from the past. I am recording this today on a very grey and cold day and so I am using the opportunity to wear my arboreal sweater in case you have noticed a little costume change from the previous scene. So I would like to announce the winners of the giveaway that I posted in the last episode which was the 20th episode celebration and for this giveaway I have two beautiful skeins of yarn. This is how they look. It is yarn donated by Miss Farfelu and it's two skeins of fingering weight merino wool which has been superwash treated with an eco-friendly process. And this here is the card of Miss Farfelu. She has an Etsy shop, her name is Dominique and she is from Canada and she has some gorgeous gorgeous colorways. You can see here we have um, evening dress in red and the uh, other one is called blush which is super beautiful or lush I'm sorry it's lush. So this is this colorway. And the person who is going to win these two beautiful skeins is post number 42 and that is uh, Mar Martushka Knits and this is Martha from or Marta from London. Congratulations Marta. The quest for the giveaway was to tell us what you would make with that beautiful yarn and Marta said she would make a brioche shawl and I think this will be just perfect with these two colors. They will go away, go along together really well. So congratulations Marta, please get in touch with me, send me a message on Instagram or on Ravelry and let me know your address so that I can send these games out to you. And now there is a lot of chances to win more prizes on the podcast. In the last couple of weeks I have received some messages from lovely 
small independent designers who have published new designs and who would like to share a copy of their design with viewers of the Dunkel Green podcast. And the first pattern that I am going to talk about is by LB Handmade. I'm going to put a picture here. It is the wonderful cardigan Sunny Every Day, which she has just published in April. And I have been following along the creation of this cardigan for a while because I am following Melissa's podcast, Knitting the Stash, and she has been a test knitter for this cardigan. And I have already um, gotten a lot of impressions of it, and I think I will knit this cardigan as well soon. So it is knit out of iron weight yarn, and it has this beautiful uh, cable in the yoke, and I think being out of iron weight it is probably a quicker knit than many other sweaters, and I think I would enjoy to wear this very much. So, um, Oh yeah, I forgot to say, in order to win the the pattern, I will set up a Ravelry thread and there will be two more patterns coming up now. And in this thread, please let me know which of the three patterns you would like to knit and maybe why. Or just write a little comment and with what you feel like. But please only one comment per person. So the next um, pattern that I would like to talk about is by Handmade Riot. And this is a fairly unknown designer. Her name is Alex and she is from Bosnia, but she is currently living as a refugee in the US. And she designed this beautiful pair of mittens it's a colorwork mitten design, uh, close to uh, the very popular Norwegian colorwork mittens, but it has its very unique and different style because it is a Slavic traditional pattern. And I think it's really beautiful. The name of the pattern is Slava and the name of the designer on Ravelry is Handmade Riot. And uh, Alex was so kind to give a a coupon code for viewers of the Dunkelgrün podcast and this coupon code is Dunkelgrün10. Uh, um, I will put it here, Dunkelgrün10, and with this you will get 10% off if you buy the pattern. So I, I am certainly going to make these mittens. I think they are super beautiful and I like that they are a bit more um, geometric shaped and not so organic round shapes as the um, Norwegian ones. I think it's really um, a different kind of color work. So I, I want to make them very much. Oh, and it is made out of sport weight yarn, if I remember correctly. That is also quite nice for color work mittens, I think. And the third pattern that I am going to give away to one of you is also from a um, Slavic uh, person and this is Maja Danailov and Maja lives in Belgrade but she is from originally from Montenegro. And Maja also designed a mitten pattern but hers has cables on it, I put the picture here, and it's called the Veneda Mittens. And this, as you can see, is a cabled fingerless mitten design. I think this is fairly easy also for a beginner to knit, even if you have never knit any cables. This is a very nice small project to get started with some patterns, I would say. I think it's really, might be really nice for a beginner and also a quick project because it's so small. And this one is knit out of fingering weight yarn. So yeah, I hope you like these patterns and as I said, if you would like to win, please hop on over to the Ravelry thread and enter uh, a post which tells me which of these three patterns was your favorite and just um, maybe write something that you would like to write. So yeah, good luck. Then I do have another um, a pair of beautiful hand dyed yarns which have been sponsored as giveaways to the podcast and these two I would like to use as prizes for our self dyed cal. So as you probably already know if you are a returning regular viewer we have in the Ravelry group a cal going on which is the self dyed cal and this is co-hosted by me and Marina of the Strawberry Patches podcast and Marina Toys and we are encouraging people to dye their own yarn to knit with them. This color has already started um, last year in September 
here and I have already drawn some winners in the previous episode because we had a, a first um, kind of end to the cal but it's still continuing and I will pick more winners uh, from the chatter thread on the 30th of June and maybe I will even keep this cal thread open because I I like it so much and I'm having so much fun to follow along all the dyeing adventures that you guys are doing and maybe I'll just pick that thread once in a while to um, pick some giveaway winners. So on the 30th of June the people who post from the from April from April to the 30th of June will have the chance to win these two wonderful skeins of yarn. And these are from Tintica Yarns, which is a very small indie dye company in Spain. And she does uh, dye her yarns on Spanish merino and uh, uses only plant dye. So let me show you them close up. This is the wonderful plant dyed color dyed by Tinti Cayarns. And the yellow ochre color is um, mild pomegranate. And the other one is called Tina or Thina or Thina. I am not really sure how to pronounce it, but I think they look really nice and we can get nice and close and show off the texture of these lovely yarns. I'm showing them upside down. Super. <laughs> this is the logo. Spanish hand dyed yarns. Really nice. So yeah, if you would like to have a chance to win these two, please hop on over to the um, to the self dyed cow. And if you're interested in buying these nice yarns, for yourself, this is the card and you can get them at tintica.com. Oh, and for Tintica Yarns, there is also a coupon code with which you will get 15% off of your online purchase and the coupon code is NATURALLY. I'm not sure if it's a capital, la capital letters or not. Try, try either. Capital letters or maybe not capital letters, but it's the word naturally. So uh, thank you very much for donating these beautiful yarns, Aida. I uh, think they are a real treat. And last but not least, I have another giveaway for you guys. And this one is not sponsored from uh, the dyers or the makers. This one I bought myself and I would like to share with you. And it is to celebrate my trip to Barcelona, which I visited together with my boyfriend. And I have already talked about, you heard me already talk about the yarn shop, uh, All You Need Is Love. And there I purchased um, another project bag and another yarn for you, which I would like to share with you. So this is a project bag by Raquel, my dear friend from Barcelona, Raquel Francia. I'm not sure if you say Francia or Francia. I'm sorry, I should have asked you, <laughs> but this is her cute little tag. And this is the beautiful project bag and I love it so much. It's cats and this funny dog here on parachutes. And there is a wonderful yellow lining to it, which I think fits very well with the theme. Oh, my lens does not like that. Fits very well with the theme of um, Catalonia, where Barcelona is located. So. Um, together with this project bag, I'm giving away a skein of yarn, which is also handmade in Barcelona. The project bag is made in Barcelona, by the way, of course. And the uh, yeah, skein of yarn is also made in Barcelona, and this is an exclusive yarn that you can buy at the yarn shop. All you need is love, and it is called Murmur, the sound of softness. And the colorway is Petunia. So this is this wonderful skein of yarn. It's uh, lovely speckles of berry and also a little bit of navy blue, very rarely, and gray, and of course yellow for Catalonia. I wanted to have the yellow for this giveaway, just because I think it fits very well. If you don't know about Catalonia and what I'm talking about, then Google about it. 
or read the news and you will find out. So this is the lovely Spain and this giveaway is happening right now on Instagram and you can hop on over there and scroll down a little bit on my timeline and find the picture where I post this project bag and this skein of yarn and there are all the conditions that you need to fulfill. So actually I'm asking you to follow my friends in Barcelona which is Pau from Pau Knits and um, Philanthropia, Melissa from Philanthropia, the yarn shop and also the yarn shop All You Need Is Love and um, of course Raquel who made the project bag. So uh, if you would like to win, please hop on over to Instagram and I wish you good luck. I hope you have enjoyed this episode and I wish you happy knitting and see you next time. Bye!